welcome to this week's episode of Penny Manny TV and this week we're going to be making a butterfly mobile. Alright, so gather yourself some inspirational images. I'm using butterflies, of course. Uh, you could also use hummingbirds, uh, which of course you want to picture their wings stopped because, you know, their wings move really, really fast. Or dragonflies. I'm using some cardstock, only the white color. This is mixed, so if I wanted to print posters or anything for school, so I have it left over. These are called S curves, so these will help you to get all those weird shapes of the wings. There's also uh, that see-through ruler on that hip curve that I'm going to be using. I'm using a mechanical pencil, eraser, and three different sizes of drawing pens. So I have a large, and that's the equivalent to a number five, and then I have my drawing pens from school in a number three and a number one. And the kit on the right has 0, 0, 5, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 5, and 0, 8. So that you can get as a complete set over at Michael's Craft Store. I have a massive stockpile of Laurentian pencil crayons are the ones I prefer. And I have a mechanical and electric pencil sharpener. Because I'll be coloring a lot. Oh look! Popcorn chips! I love these. They're so good. So I have some crochet cord in a kind of creamy ivory color and it matches the hymn book that I'm using. You can use any kind of old book. I went to Bibles for Missions and I paid like a dollar fifty. And if you want to cheat and you don't want a pencil color or draw or anything, uh, you can get some fabric. This is um, the little wrapping paper for a bouquet of flowers. Oh look, there's more food! So there's some ways that you can cheat if you want to just print out the butterflies or grab some fabric and just glue it on or whatever so I am doing it manually because this gives me the opportunity to show you guys how to like some drawing techniques and coloring with pencil crayons because I've had a lot of practice from doing my fashion illustrations so I took my cardstock and I cut it into halves for the large ones and you can do um, some smaller ones if you want to vary the sizes a little so that's why I have my small ones but of course I need to simplify my projects because sometimes I give myself too much to do. So I'm making sure that the butterfly that I am going to draw is going to be much smaller than this sheet because I want the pages of the hymn book to be larger than the actual butterfly because I want to layer it like I want to like a tiered cake with paper. So, um, you know how when you're in art school, well, obviously you didn't go to art school, but like your art class from high school or elementary school, they taught you how to like draw everything with a grid? Well, you don't have to go painstakingly go through a grid, just um, use some very simple techniques. I am comparing the size of the picture on my screen, which is two inches by two inches and it comes out to about four inches on my page so really I'm just doubling everything. The things you want to look at are so there are about three things that I can tell you to keep in mind as you're drawing in general. Distance, so how long is it, how wide is it, and of course because of the 2D image height doesn't have any factor unless it were 3D. So uh, the other thing is angles or curves. Angles would be like, is it 90 degrees to this line? Notice how the butterfly, you see the line that goes across the top, or the bottom of the top wing, and then the very sides reaching up to the top, is that going in or is that going out? And then you look at the curve from the very top corners of the top wings, going in towards the body, is it curvier at the top and then going straight down to the body or is it going curvy up and then going straight up into the corner? So those are the kind of things you want to look at. So angles and curves. And then you, of course, want to look at proportion. The top wing is larger than the small or is it equal? And then you look at individual sections. Is this little round dot supposed to be bigger or smaller? And then where's that placement? So that's where proportion kind of goes in, or placement. Is it farther away from the body than this section? Is it closer? And then you just 
drawn all your little details and you just kind of think of that. So like as I'm drawing this section that's coming out, there's this round yellow section and of course I got to look at all the angles. Is it a 9 degree to that center line that I put for straight through the middle of the body of the butterfly? Or is it on an angle? Is it going moving out as it goes up? Or, you know, it just those kind of questions. You just kind of go through that in your head and you just compare it. You just distance, how long or wide is it, the angles or the curves, and proportion and placement. I know these questions might be a little bit confusing, so look at snowball effect. If you start from the most simplest aspect and just start adding details and making it more complicated, it refers to a writing style. So draw the basic outline shape, then draw in your little color sections. So like the yellow versus the blue versus the brown, your major colors. And then start drawing all like the subtle little colors, like the light brown versus the dark ground, brown. But of course, you don't have to go super detailed because what you can do is you can just shade it versus actually drawing all like those little sections of where you're supposed to put that color. All right, so now I'm going to walk you through the basic coloring techniques that I use. Now, it's calling for a kind of ultramarine blue for the most part, but of course... Certain colors are flat and other colors are vibrant because of like the brightness and everything. So for this one, I'm taking my blueberry color, which is a dark blue, but it has like a tint of purple, which I really like. So that will bring out the blue because of the purple. And I'm outlining everything because that's actually going to be colored over with the black marker. So to make it look like it's been professionally printed. So I'm taking a peacock blue and an ocean blue and I'm putting them all I'm coloring the whole thing the whole sections that are supposed to be blue and I'm not doing it really faint I'm doing it kind of like a medium I'm not pressing it in too hard I'm not pressing ever so lightly so that it's only very faint because um, the more you press in the less likely you can layer colors like I'm doing right now so this would be the peacock blue which it has a kind of green tint to it so this will make it more alive because now I have green and I'm going to have a hint of purple. So now I'm taking my ultramarine blue after my two shades of ocean blue and peacock blue as my base. I'm taking the ultramarine and I'm doing my shading now. So it's supposed to be the prime color, but the base colors are going to act as highlighted areas. And then I'm going to take my blueberry now, and I'm going to do some extra shading. So when you're shading, you can either do it really soft and all blended, so there are no harsh contrasts between light and dark. Everything is blending from one color to the other, or from light to dark. So when you want to go highlight, I always make a rule of thumb that the maximum amount of pencil crayon like layering of colors is about four maybe five depending on how intense I colored and how like I pressed into the paper because the paper can only handle so much cardstock can handle a lot more than just regular paper but I find that if I'm just using average printer paper I can color so hard into the paper that it'll literally start coming off in like little paper shavings and you don't want your paper to fall apart because then it kind of takes away from the artwork that you're making so the cardstock can handle a lot so I don't have to worry about that I can layer as many as five but if you're using less or not a strong paper I would suggest that instead of if you've done like four different colors laying all over on top of each other that when you go to highlight you use the eraser to pick off that color so that way it's the white c color of the paper that's showing through and you don't have to worry about ruining the paper that you're coloring on. So let's rehash. So I'm not using just one, but two different colors, medium coverage. And I'm using blue in this instance, of course. So ocean and peacock blue. Now the ultramarine is supposed to be my base color. 
but I used those two different base colors, Ocean and Peacock, to give it more life. So either I just shade areas with the Ultramarine, or I can cover really lightly over all of it. So that way it looks like just a lighter version of the Ultramarine, but more bright, of course, because Ultramarine can be kind of flat. So here I am. I'm shading on my sections so that the wings of the butterfly look more like a fan and that there's depth to it. And here is the final stage. I have my blueberry, of course, and I'm highlighting the very outline of the butterfly in number five, which is the largest of the three different sizes I have for the drawing pens. Number three I'm using for all the different sections of the wings because those sections are the full wing. It's like all the different parts of an airplane wing. They have more significance than the actual colors that are painted on top of that. So those colors would be drawn in with the smallest pen. So this is what the butterfly looks when it's all finished. So it's up to you how many you want to do, but I will highly suggest doing an uneven number, which for some reason, like it's just speaking to me, it's very unesthetically pleasing to do an uneven number than an even. Aww, are you ready for your next one? You got a little tired? I am eating authentic Italian pizza smothered with garlic sauce, which do you just perfect. So here are one of my next butterflies I'm doing, and I'm doing a pink. Now, of course, it's going to be super light, and the only color I have available is a darker version because all my pinks are some kind of peach undertone. So I'm layering down a whole white on that whole section, and I'm using raspberry and I'm going up very, very light coverage. So I'm going over this one section now with very light coverage, and then I'm going to darken it as I need to. So layering it super lightly every time that I want to darken it. And I'm going to stop myself before it's the full darkness of the actual raspberry color, which of course you can see on the end of the pencil crayon. And when you have that kind of color, like you have to use a dark color like this raspberry to shade it like this, what you want to do is shade with gray. And of course, Laurentian pencil crayon packs have like multiple different colors of gray that you can shade with. Don't make it a darker color if it's not actually darker or if it's not how you want to go shade it with gray that is equivalent to the color that you have so of course I happen to have like a dusty rose which is kind of like the pink and gray mixed combined so I'm using that for my shading but if it's any other color that's super light shade with the gray so here is my purple I started off with a lavender and of course I'm going to a violet and I'm metallic purple and then I'm going to kind of like a great purple so that it gives that extra pop and then I'm going blueberry so I love combining either one or two different colors that would just make it pop um, other colors I would suggest like say a yellow you would use uh, like look at your color wheel it's whatever colors are next to each other and then there's certain ones that are exceptions so a yellow would be either to the red side, so a little bit of orange, or to the green side with a little bit of green, so like a lime green. And then exceptions to that would be like, you could put like a purpley blue undertone to a pe uh, like a evergreen that's been darkened with peacock green. Like, you can just go nuts. Um, I always do sample swatches of all my coloring to make sure I'm going to like what it looks like before I actually do my whole thing because I don't want to erase it. And when you're shading too, instead of just shading very softly, you can do like these little striations, like a squiggle, so then it just looks more artistic. Oh, guess what? I'm hungry again. Burrito time! And of course I made myself some avocado dip because I don't like tomatoes so I don't make guacamole. And those artisan black bean and roasted garlic chips are so good. So once you have all your butterflies colored and drawn out and everything, 
what you're going to do is you're going to cut it out and you want to go exactly on the outline of your butterfly. And when you have like little V or triangles where you have to go in, go in from both sides because otherwise you're just going to start ripping your paper when you're trying to move your scissors around. And because the little antenna of the butterflies are very, very thin and I don't want it to be wispy and bend or anything like that, um, I'm not going to cut directly next to it. I'm going to give it like a little support, some paper around it. And I'm coloring it to match the paper, which in this case is an Arizona Topaz, very, very light of the brown. And then I'm using this colorless blender from Prismacolor, which you can buy individually at uh, the Michael's Craft Store. And then with my hymn book, which I'm using, I'm cutting the first layer. It's almost like a quarter of an inch all the way around. And you can use a ruler, but I have a really good time roughing it out because I just do. So it takes practice though. And then for the second layer, I'm starting thin at the top and the bottom, and then I'm going wider on the sides because of course the paper is not proportional because it's like narrow but long pages. So I'm just working with what I have. And so I'm gonna make sure that they're all placed evenly and I'm gonna take my little hole punch I'm going to measure some crochet cord. I'm going to take it between my thumb and my index finger and measure it to my elbow. So completely outstretched. Times that by three. Tie it around the outside through the hole. Knot it a couple times. And of course for me, I'm going to put um, a scripture verse from my Bible in there that's kind of inspirational. Uh, Psalms 19, 1 through 3. And now, it, you can make your own mobile to hang this from unless you got it from Michael's or Craft Store. You just made something that can make do. I happen to have this little bird cage. Like, it's like a vintage bird cage that's hanging in our laundry room. And I'm going to put some of the butterflies on the inside, some of them hanging from the bottom, and stagger everything so it's kind of uneven. And that's it. So things you can use as the base of your own mobile is like a couple pieces of wood into a cross or you can use like a hoop and then tie it around that and stagger it like one of those uh, quilting or embroidery hoops. You can get like the wood ones for like super super cheap at Walmart or Michael's Craft Store. And this is what it looks like all cleft up all nice and pretty. So that's it for this week's of Handy Mandy TV. And if you guys have any questions, comments, requests, anything like that, I'd love to give you guys a hand. So just leave a comment below. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And I will put some recommendations for similar projects in the links below.